Alright, so in front of me I've got the Samsung Galaxy A52 5G. This is the successor to last year's A51 5G. Just a reminder that the A50 and A51 was Samsung's best selling smartphone. So let's see if the A52 is worthy enough to be the best selling Samsung phone this year. Talking about the box, it looks cheap and the phone is shown on the front and on the left side it has the Galaxy A52 branding. Alrighty, cut the two seals and we're good to go. Firstly, you're presented with the phone itself, but before that, there's another smaller box tucked up inside. This contains the quick start guide and the SIM ejector tool. Here's the phone itself. I've chosen the awesome blue colour because I don't know, it looks aesthetically pleasing and it's colourful. And below the phone, you'll find the charger and the USB-A to USB-C cable. There's no earphones or case included in the box. So the unboxing experience was average as expected. So, starting off with the design and build quality. On the bottom you've got the headphone jack, yes the headphone jack in 2021 thankfully, the microphone, the USB-C port and the speaker. On the right you've got the power button and volume control and on the top you've got the SIM tray and another microphone. This phone has a plastic matte finish which looks sleek and since it's matte it won't be a fingerprint magnet. Many other reviewers have mentioned that the back feels like rubber but to me it feels like any other matte plastic back. The phone feels like it has a decent amount of weight to it. The camera bump is somewhat minimal but the bump blends in really well with the rest of the phone. This phone doesn't have wireless charging but it does have NFC at least in the UK. The A52 has water resistance which is a surprise because it's been a while since the Galaxy A series had water resistance. It's rated at IP67 meaning you can submerge it up to 1 meter for 30 minutes. You can either get the A52 in either black, white, blue or violet colour. It has an optical fingerprint scanner, it's not the fastest but then again it's not the slowest. The fingerprint sensor is just average. It doesn't work well when your thumb is really really wet. So this is why I definitely prefer the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner on Samsung flagships. But all in all, the fingerprint scanner is decent. The scanner is positioned on the bottom of the phone, which feels kinda uncomfortable. I prefer the position where the scanner was in the middle of the phone, like on the Note 10, S20, S21, etc. Also, this phone has secure 2D face unlock if you're interested. Talking about the vibration more on this phone, it is what you'd find on an average normal Android phone. So it's not up there with the Samsung haptic motors on their flagship phones. So that's something to bear in mind. Moving on to the display, the display size is 6.5 inch with an aspect ratio of 20 by 9 and the resolution is Full HD+. The phone fits pretty well in my pocket and I can comfortably use it one handed. It's grippy and it's quite good for media consumption such as YouTube. It's a Super AMOLED panel with 405 ppi with a pretty small punch hole camera in the centre middle. It's capable of 120Hz so it's super smooth when scrolling but it's not the adaptive 120Hz you'd find on the S21 series. Overall the phone has slim bezels considering the price point. The screen has Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protection which is up from last year's Gorilla Glass 3 protection and the display has a peak brightness of 800 nits which is the highest ever on a Galaxy A series. The outdoor visibility is excellent in my opinion. It gets really 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 bright outdoors even under the sunlight. The screen looks vivid and high quality, obviously it's a Samsung display. Do note that this phone doesn't have the best viewing angle, so if you twist the phone to the left and right up and down, then the display starts to shift colours and it has a rainbow colour effect. Alrighty, moving on to the processor. The A52 5G comes with the Snapdragon 750G, which is an 8nm octa-core processor. This phone supports Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1. The Wi-Fi and mobile data connectivity and performance is very stable and it's very fast with this chipset. As for the processor day-to-day -day experience, I'll get to it later when I'm talking about the phone's software. This phone is sub-6 5G capable which is very nice for the price and it comes with the Adreno 619 GPU. Talking about the GPU, let's talk about the gaming experience. 
Gaming on this phone is somewhat manageable. It's not anything special, but it is good enough. The maximum FPS I can get on PUBG is 40 FPS. So unfortunately, there's no 60 FPS option. Although it is 40 FPS, it is pretty stable and it doesn't fluctuate, meaning it stays around 40 FPS throughout a gaming session. And also the phone stays relatively cool when playing a match of PUBG. Moving on to the cameras, there's four cameras on this phone, a 64 megapixel f1.8 main camera with OIS, an 8 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide camera with 123 degree field of view, a 5 megapixel f2.4 macro camera, and lastly a 5 megapixel f2.4 depth sensor and also there's a single LED flash. In my opinion the depth sensor is pretty useless because with software you can achieve the same thing so it's not really worth having a depth sensor. As for the selfie camera it has a whopping 32 megapixel f2.2 selfie camera. Both the back and selfie camera is capable of recording up to 4k 30fps. Before I show you the photo and video capability remember that this is a mid-range 400 pound phone not a flagship. Both the main camera and the ultra wide camera is pretty good outdoors. The photos look sharp, detailed and vivid. In my opinion the ultra wide camera looks like it, ha it has more vivid colours than the main camera. The dynamic range isn't the best especially when compared to say the Galaxy S10. And when you take pictures indoors that's where the dynamic range really starts to lack and it starts to show. But all in all, I'm satisfied with the back cameras. And by the way, it's really impressive that this phone has optical image stabilization. The A50 and the A51 didn't have OIS. Also, this phone has 10x digital zoom, so it doesn't look the best, but it does the job because this phone doesn't have a telephoto camera. The macro camera is pretty high quality, it's good for taking pictures of objects close up, but I don't think that many people will use the macro camera that frequently. The low light camera performance on this phone, especially with night mode, is well above average and it's quite good, especially because of the OIS. The selfie camera is adequate enough to take photos in bright condition and I have to mention that the selfie camera has warm colour temperature to it. The video recording on the selfie camera is decent, especially with 60fps. So the video recording of the back camera is where the phone really starts to lag. The footage I'm showing you right now is recorded at 1080p 60fps. Firstly, the lack of dynamic range really shows in the footage and although this phone has OIS, it doesn't look like there's any sort of stabilization happening when recording. The footage is really shaky and it doesn't look that pleasant. The only way to combat the shaky footage is to turn on super steady mode but when you do that it switches from 60fps down to 30fps. So I'm kinda disappointed with the video performance of this phone. Moving on to the speakers, it has stereo speakers which you did not have last year on the A51 and it supports Dolby Atmos. The speaker on this phone is quite good, it has adequate bass and high quality sound. It does get loud but if you max out the volume too much, it does sound tinny and distorted. Moving on to the storage and RAM, in the UK this phone comes with 128GB of storage with 6GB of RAM. But in other markets, you are able to find 256GB with 8GB of RAM. Thankfully, this phone supports micro SD card expansion up to 1TB. The 6GB of RAM is good enough considering the price. I'm able to have uh, like 4-6 to six apps open in the background before the app starts refreshing. Moving on to the battery, this phone has 4500mAh battery which is the same capacity as last year's A51. The standby battery drain on this phone is decent, so for example I go to sleep around 10pm and wake up and wake up at 6.30 in the morning. So overnight the battery drains around 4-6% which is decent standby battery life considering that I have poor 4G coverage in my house. And considering that I'm a heavy user so I have my brightness on the maximum, I have almost every feature enabled. I'm getting about a day's worth of battery life. So in my opinion it's not the best but it's also again not the worst. 
The battery life in general is just average in my opinion. Talking about the charging capability, the A52 supports up to 25 watt super fast charging, but unfortunately a 15 watt fast charger is included instead. Moving on to the software, this phone comes shipped with Android 11 with the feature packed One UI 3.1. It's so feature packed that it has features like pop up view mode, scrolling screenshots, advanced Samsung switch backup system, Bixby routines and many 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 more useful features. Mentioning again that this phone has the Snapdragon 750G is pretty nice in my day to day experience. The uploading speeds are adequate so for example when I open Twitter it takes around 1-3 to three seconds to open and the camera app opens up relatively quickly. In terms of smoothness, it's pretty fluid and smooth considering that it has 120Hz display, but on rare occasions, this phone does stutter and have frame drop. But then again, I'm using like 92% of the storage, so that could be why it's lagging and stuttering. And by the way, with One UI 3.1, you have the option to get Google Discover feed inside Samsung Launcher. Talking about the pre-installed apps, this phone comes pre-installed with Netflix, Spotify, TikTok and some Microsoft apps, but you are able to uninstall most of them. Talking about any bugs or glitches that I faced, I have been facing a bug on this phone and it occurs when you have the blue light filter enabled. You'll notice that when you unlock the phone, the blue light filter is off for a split second, then it quickly turns on. I'll show a slow motion demonstration footage on the screen right now. As you can see the screen switches colours when unlocking and it's quite frustrating. Another bug I'm facing is that when you swipe across the recent app menu too quickly, the app icon and the app screen preview is delayed and it's blank for a split second. So again, that's pretty frustrating. Moving on from the bugs, this phone has an always on display which is a classic Samsung feature. This phone is guaranteed up to 3 years of major software updates and an additional 1 year of security updates which makes it a total of 4 years of software updates. Will it get frequent updates? The answer is yes if it's an unlocked phone, meaning you buy it straight from Samsung. If we take a look at the Galaxy A51 update schedule, you can see that it was updated somewhat frequently and it got the Android 11 update last month. So for the price I believe that this phone has excellent software support. Moving on to the price, this phone's price in the UK is £399, which is actually cheaper than last year's A51 5G, which was £430. So for a cheaper price and with really impressive specs, this phone is definitely worth the buy and I would say it's a bargain if you consider the specs to the performance. And if you've got the A50 or even the A51, you should consider upgrading to the A52 5G. I would even say that this phone is better than the OnePlus Nord and any other phones around the £400 price range. I can easily predict that the Galaxy A52 will be Samsung's best selling smartphone for this year and it will be selling like hotcakes. But I would recommend you holding off and waiting for let's say a few months until the price drops slightly. But if you don't have the patience then go ahead and buy it. So that was it for this review. Uh, I hope that I have included everything, I hope it was in depth, but if you've got any other questions then let me know down in the comments below and I'll try to respond. If you like this video then consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video. And that's pretty much it, bye!